So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about evangelism. I believe with all my heart that God is doing something special here. I believe that the presence of the Holy Spirit is here. I believe that God this year has been stirring something up inside of Pastor Casey. And I believe that the Holy Spirit wants to meet us here today. I believe that not only do we need another comforter, right? What we need is power to be able to preach the gospel, to be able to go out and evangelize. And by the time we're done today, you know what I want? I want you to be so stirred up in the spirit of God that we would go out into Del Rey and conquer for the kingdom of God. How does that sound? What I want every single person in this auditorium to know is that you have a story. You have a testimony. And if we're going to expect greater things, if we're going to believe that in South Florida, which I'm from Miami, that in South Florida, that there's only 3% of church people and we want to double it to six, it's going to have to start here. It's going to have to start amongst the body of Christ. We're going to need to rise up as a church. I believe that God is raising us for such a time as this. I believe that as the world is getting darker and darker, men and women of God are being risen up with purpose, with mission. Have you seen the state that the world is in today? It's dark out there. The world has no answers. You know who has answers? You do. Do we really believe that God just took you out of whatever he took you out of so that you could just come to church on a Sunday and be comfortable? All right, I'll take it easy, Casey. I'll take it easy on him. No, I want to stir you up today. You have a voice. God has make, made us proclaimers of the gospel. God has rescued us from ourselves. I believe today amongst the church, I believe that the Holy Spirit has been planting a seed inside of you. And I believe today that that seed will come to life. But it's only going to come to life if you're willing to open up your mind and open up your heart to the, thingdom, the things of the kingdom of God. Only if you're willing to let go of those strongholds and bondages that keep you from coming into church and being free to worship. God rescued us so that we could be free. So that this could be a house of healing. So that this could be a house of hope. That this could be a place of liberation. But we're too distracted. We're too distracted by the things of the world. We're too distracted by what other people think about us. We're too afraid to come against opposition. We're too afraid for people to reject us or abandon us. Well, I'm here to tell you that the Lord has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind so that we could go out and save Delray, so that we could go out and change Boca Raton, so that we could go out and change Boynton Beach. We're not going to be able to do it if we're comfortable. God doesn't do well in the comfortable. And today we're going to talk about the Apostle Paul. We're going to talk about an evangelist. We're going to talk about someone who left everything for the kingdom of God. You know, I was telling the group earlier, when we try to connect the dots and point to Jesus and point to Jesus and point to Jesus, which rightfully so, we love Jesus. What do people usually say to me? They usually say, well, Danny, that was Jesus. That was the Mashiach, the Messiah. How could I do what he's done? But no, God sent his only son to die on the cross so that we could have the spirit of God dwell inside of us and come forth so that we could do ministry the same way. Paul was a man. Peter was a man. 
John was a man. And he was used to do mighty things for the kingdom of God. It breaks my heart when I hear that things have changed, that the Holy Spirit is not doing anything for the kingdom. Who sold us that lie? God is doing greater things. We should be expecting, we should be coming in on Sunday expecting to be infilled, to be indwelled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because like Casey said last week, the Spirit wants to love people. The Spirit of God wants to teach us. The Spirit of God wants to come alongside of us, come into us, and then go out forth. And one of the powerful things that Casey said last week was, not only is the Spirit of God working inside, but he's also working outside. You're not going to win people to the Lord because you're so good. You're going to win people to the Lord because he's so good. Because the person that you love the most in this earth, he loves them more. Sorry, baby. And I know that the Spirit of God is relentlessly, relentlessly pursuing us. So Avenue Church, would you expect greater things today? Would you all rise to your feet, please? Would you just close your eyes for a moment? Put away all the distractions. Would we stop thinking about what we're going to eat for lunch later? Or why won't this guy just shut up? And could we just raise our hands to the air? Could we just be in a spirit of receptiveness? And could we just ask the Holy Spirit to do something special amongst the people? Paul says, for though I am a free from all men, I have been made myself a servant to all, that I might win the more. And to the Jews I became a Jew, that I might win the Jews. And to those who are under the law as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without the law, as without the law, that I might win those who are without the law. To the weak, I became the weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Now this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partakers of you with it. Father God, we just lift up your holy name today. Lord, I pray for your sons and daughters who have come today, Lord. Father, I know that you're doing a renewing work here in Delray, Lord. I know that the Spirit of God wants to explode on Delray. Lord, I pray that there would be a release today, a freedom from the yoke of bondage, Lord. I pray that eyes would be opened in the name of Jesus. I pray that ears would be opened in the name of Jesus. I pray that the gifts of the Holy Spirit would just shower down on your people, Lord. That they would be encouraged and motivated from this message to go out and save the world. Lord, we thank you as I decrease and you increase in me. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. So when I started preparing this message, God really put two scriptures on my heart. It was that scripture, the gospel scriptures, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son into the world that whoever should believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Church, hear me now. God sent his only son into the world not to condemn the world, but that through his son we all might be saved. God is doing a renewing work on the face of the earth. And you have the opportunity to be a part of it. I have to say this because the Spirit is telling me to say this. We've done a lousy job as a church. I work in the treatment field. And I've seen broken, hopeless addicts coming as I was at one point in my life. Who have been jaded by the church who have been rejected by the church. 
This is supposed to be a house of healing. This is supposed to be a place where we greet people with open arms. Where we love recklessly. That's how we're going to win the lost. Jesus said that they shall know that you are my disciples by your love. Now listen, <laughs> Avenue you church, you guys won me and my wife by your love. You guys want us to this church by your love. So I know that there's love in this house. But now we have to go out and bring them in. The Lord also put on my heart Revelation 12, 11, For they were made overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Church, do you know that you have a testimony today? Do you know you have a testimony? Everyone in here has a voice. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what you've been through. You have a voice. So what does God do? God takes me to the book of Acts. And I know that we just have started the message about Acts 2 where the Spirit of God falls on the church. And Casey last week preached and said, what, 3,000 people were saved. And what do you start to see? The burning of the church. And the church begins to move forward with power. When the Holy Spirit comes forth, the Holy Spirit convicts with power. And he wins hearts. And then the Lord said to me, you know what? The best illustration of a testimony that are in the scriptures is Paul in chapter 26 of the book of Acts. Because Paul is standing before King Agrippa, right? And King Agrippa sits on his mighty throne thinking that he's putting Paul on trial. Little does he know that the God creator of the universe is putting him on trial. God was already saved. Paul already had the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He had already received Jesus. So Paul, every town that he went into, every city that he went into on his three missionary journeys, right? With his fourth ending in Rome. What did he do? He went and he turned cities upside down. When the Holy Spirit gets a, a hold on our hearts, Number one, he's going to turn your life upside down. And number two, then, he's going to ask you to go and turn other people's lives upside down. And change the world. So I want you now with me to turn in your Bibles to Acts 26. And this is where we will camp out. And I think that the Holy Spirit here gives us a model for our testimony. When we are sharing our testimony, when we're letting people where we come from, the Holy Spirit should move to let people know where you've been, what your conversion experience looks like, and then what's changed in your life. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. If the conversion hasn't created change in your life, go back to the drawing board. It's easy to have a lot of head knowledge. It's easy to understand the letter of the law. But what about the spirit of the law? How can we give away fruit that we don't have? What does Jesus call us to do? Abide in him, right? We are the branches. And we will bear much fruit. That's what God is calling us to do. And so we see here, Paul, standing before King Agrippa. And I love the way that the Holy Spirit will always open the door. And what does the Holy Spirit do? He says, 
Then Agrippa says to Paul, you are permitted to speak for yourself. So Paul stretched out his hand and answered for himself. He says, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because today I shall answer for myself before you concerning all the things of which I am accused of the Jews, especially because you are an expert in all customs and questions which have to do with the Jews. Therefore, I beg you to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, which was spent from the beginning among my own nation at Jerusalem, all the Jews know. They knew me from the first, if they were willing to testify, that according to the strictest sect of our religion, I lived as a Pharisee. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made by God for our fathers. To this promise our twelve tribes earnestly serving God night and day hope to attain. For this hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused by the Jews. And Paul says, why should it be thought incredible by you that God raises the dead? The Holy Spirit will always open a door for you. And it will usually come in the form of a question. Jesus was a master at questions. If you believe that the Holy Spirit is working through you and that the Holy Spirit is working on that person, the Holy Spirit wants to pull out of them truth. We've had the question before, right? Do you believe in God? For the first 30 years of my life, I didn't believe in God. I was God. It was my world and you were in it. And so you have to know where I came from before you can know what the conversion experience means. So some of us here have a past. How many of us in here have a past? Okay. So some of, them, some of us have gone through what? Brokenness. Some of us have been bound by alcoholism or drug addiction. Some of us grew up in the church and ran away. Some of us grew up in the church and stayed. You have a voice too about the keeping power of Jesus. Loss, grief, divorces, absentee fathers and mothers, things that can absolutely make you go astray in this life. You have a voice. It's part of your testimony. And your testimony will become part of his story for God's glory. So we have to present to the world where we came from. And here's what Paul was saying. Paul was saying, it's the Jewish orthodoxy that wants to have me killed. Well, I'm a Jew of the tribe of Benjamin. Have sat under Gamaliel, one of the scribes of the scribes. And so I come professing Jesus of Nazareth? I come proclaiming what the Holy Spirit has done in my life? And everyone wants to kill me. Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever felt like the world is out to get you? Come on. We love our little pity parties. We love to sit in places of misery and feel sorry for ourselves. I did it for 13 years of active addiction. I've made poor decisions. I'm the least qualified man to be standing on this stage. I took all the blessings and gifts that God had given me and you know where I took it to? South Beach. 13 years of active alcoholism and cocaine addiction. What do they say? Jails, institutions, and death? Been there, right? 
treatment centers, Baker Acts, suicide attempts, enslaved to a substance. But we have a great Redeemer. We have a God that loves to save the unredeemable, that loves to transform, that loves to set the captive free. God is not coming to this world, right, to make bad people good. He came into the world to make dead people alive. Are we alive today, church? Are we alive? Let's praise him. If you're alive, praise Jesus right now. Come on. Let's praise him. Let's let God erupt on this place. So Paul, indeed, I myself, in verse 9, thought I must do many things contrary to the name of Jesus. This I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. And I punished them often. In every synagogue, compelled them to blasphemy, and being exceedingly enraged against them, I persecuted them even to death in foreign cities. Ladies and gentlemen, there's many of us in here that were enemies of the cross. Before our conversion experience. We were bound in darkness. In brokenness. With a death sentence on our life. With the inability to do anything good. By God's standards. So you say to me, why did Jesus have to come? Jesus had to come on a rescue mission to save us, to change our hearts and change our minds. So Paul says, I was persecuting Christians. I was killing them, dragging them out, man, woman, and child, murdering, thinking that I was doing right for God. But God had other plans for him. Have you ever had your own plans in this life and all of a sudden God comes and knocks you off your high horse? Doesn't the Bible say humble yourself before the Lord and God would exalt you in due time? But what do we do? Oh, Daniel, you are so great. Exalt yourself, Daniel. And then God humbles us. Right? You can hit your knees in this life one way or the other by choice or he'll make you hit your knees. What does Paul do? He recounts his conversion experience. You have a past. You proclaim the past. As messy and dirty as it must be, the Holy Spirit will use your past. Next is your conversion experience. Paul says... While thus occupied, as I journeyed to Damascus with authority and, and, commission, and commission for the chief priests, at midday, O king, along the road I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, shining around me, and those who journeyed with me. And when we all had fallen to the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me and saying in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. So I said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both for the things which you have seen and of the things which I will yet reveal to you. I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles, to whom now I send you to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot have an encounter with Jesus of Nazareth through the power of the Holy Spirit and not be transformed. I'm going to say that again. We cannot have an encounter with Jesus of Nazareth 
through the power of the Holy Spirit and not be radically transformed. Paul was knocked off his high horse. And he made that statement that still rings through eternity that the world should be asking, Who are you, Lord? Jesus said, If you ask, you shall receive. If you shall seek, you shall find. If you knock, the door will be opened. God is no respecter of persons. If you're sitting in here tonight and you haven't received Jesus, I pray that you would ask that question, that the Holy Spirit would begin to stir you up and convict you of who is the Son of God. This pristine figure that came in all humility, lived the life we couldn't live, took the penalty of the cross willingly, and was scourged for your and my sins. What other figure in human history offers that? Only Jesus. And what does the Bible say? The Bible says that then, at that moment, we're transported from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. He says, now all of a sudden you are made righteous before God. Paul writes in Ephesians 1, one of the loftiest claims of redemption. He says that you were chosen before the foundations of the world. That you were chosen and brought in. He says that you were accepted into the beloved. He says that you are forgiven for all your sins, past, present, and future. He says that you are blameless now, justified, saved by grace through faith. And here's the clincher, ladies and gentlemen. He says, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Wow, I love that scripture. Have you ever tried to seal something? You can never get it sealed, right? But when God seals you with the Holy Spirit, you better believe you're going to be full of love and joy and peace and kindness and gentleness. Maybe not that gentle, sorry. <laughs> and faithfulness. And meekness and you know what the clincher was for me when I learned when they used to tell me why can't you just have more willpower Danny why can't you just stop self-control is a spiritual fruit if I can speak to anyone who's struggling with a bondage whether it's alcohol whether it's pornography Whatever it is, that you would know that it's the power of the Holy Spirit that allows you to have self-control. It's a fruit of the Spirit that allows you to be able to overcome these bondages. Christ died to set the captives free. So Paul had this incredible transformation. Where you've been, your conversion experience, and where you're going. What then? What good is it if I had this massive conversion experience and then I go home and eat my chips and watch my games? Ouch. God saved you so that the kingdom of heaven could come down on earth. The kingdom of God is here, ladies and gentlemen. It's inside of you. And God wants you to let it out. So what does Paul say to Agrippa? He says, therefore, King Agrippa, 
I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus and in Jerusalem and throughout all the region of Judea, and then to the Gentiles that they should repent, turn to God, and do works befitting of repentance. For these reasons the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. Therefore, having obtained help from God to this day, I stand witnessing both to great and small, saying no other things than those which the prophets and Moses said would come, that the Christ would suffer, that he would be the first to rise from the dead and would proclaim light to the Jewish people and to the Gentiles. His transformation had consequences. Consequences that would radically change the world. Of our New Testament books, right? We know that Paul wrote 13. Theologians argue on that 14th, right? I'm not a theologian. We'll leave that to the theologians. That he planted churches everywhere he went. That he fed the flock, that he nurtured them. And he was used as a vessel to change the world. The Apostle Paul inspires me. Why? Because October 1st, 2010, coming off a three-day cocaine binge, walking around in my boxers, picking up cigarette butts out of garbage cans, attempting suicide for the second time, the Holy Spirit drew me. I ended up at Faith Farm in Boynton Beach. That would be the last time that alcohol ever touched these lips. <laughs> Praise Him! If it were up to me, I'd still be using. Praise Him! It was Jesus that took a broken man, guilt-ridden, shamed, condemned, hopeless, lost, hit me over the head and part of my testimony is <laughs> I sat in the back at Faith Farm and here I am fresh off the streets of Miami and all of a sudden they play a worship song and I see people raising their hands and I'm like I'm out I can't do this but the reality is that the Holy Spirit already had me and I'll never forget, it was that one song I can only imagine. <sighs> Make a grown man cry. And as that tear rolled down my eye, I knew something was happening. And I went from the back of the church to the middle of the church, and from the middle of the church to the front of the church, and from the front of the church down to my knees. And then I asked God, Save me, Lord, for I'm a sinner, a broken man. And he rescued me. And then I got baptized. You know, we have baptisms coming up soon. All right? And we believe right here at the Avenue Church that a baptism is just you identifying what God has already done on the inside. Just you saying, hey, you know what? I identify with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And listen, I don't know what happens in the spirit, but let me just say this. Something started to happen to me at an exponential rate after that baptism. I don't know if we got the theology behind it to say what it was, but I know it was the Holy Spirit. And ladies and gentlemen, hear me now. Then I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. I didn't know anything about baptisms of the Holy Spirit. I wasn't a theologian that was trying to prove that the Spirit of God doesn't work on the earth anymore. God took a broken man from Miami and slayed him in the Spirit of God. And you know what I said? Did I become one of them? <laughs> you know why? Because today I'm one of the crazies. Radical for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Radical to save the lost. Radical to proclaim to the ends of the earth what Jesus Christ has done to save my life. It's time.
time. And so I left Faith Farm after a year and I was ready to go evangelize to the world. And then I met my wife. Because you know what God said? I'm going to teach you how to be a man first. You might have the zeal, but you don't have the character yet to uphold my gift. Men and women of God, it's character. It's character God's looking for. Integrity that God's looking for. You may have the most incredible gifts because believe me, God will do the supernatural through you. But if we don't have the character to uphold it, and church, I want to speak to you. I want to speak to the elders of the church, the men and women of God that have been walking with God for a long time. We need you. We need you to come alongside us. We need you to impart wisdom into us. We need you to take the younglings and teach us how to live. Pastor Casey said, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous, they do a pretty good job with this whole sponsorship thing. Are we doing a good job with the whole discipleship thing? We're the body of Christ. God saved us. God wants to do an amazing work out there. God wants us to go seek the lost. God wants you to be fired up for the things of the kingdom of God. God wants you to go out and proclaim what he's done in your life. The most amazing thing was when King Agrippa said to Paul, Paul, you almost persuade me to be a Christian. Now, theologians can argue if that was in a condescending way, but something must have been going on in King Agrippa because King Ag after Paul was like, that not only would I move in you, but that I would save everyone through the power of the Holy Spirit that's present today. So Avenue Church, I want to ask you today these three questions. I want to ask you, will you go? And when I say, will you go, wherever God has placed you now, will you begin to witness for the kingdom of God? Will you begin to take just one other person that doesn't know Jesus and love on them? Second question, will you proclaim? Will you proclaim the good news, the gospel? The Greek word is helion where we get the word evangelism. It just means proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. It just means giving your testimony about what he's done. So that your testimony will become his story in history for God's glory. Finally, Avenue Church, I'm going to ask you, will you love the world? Will you love the world with such a fervent fervor that the world will be turned upside down? People are not looking for arguments. People are looking to be loved and accepted the way Jesus accepted them. Can we radically love people that we transform Del Rey? That we transform South Florida and that we get to that place. We're going to ask if our prayer partners can come up. When I look over here, you know what I see? I see mighty men and women of God. I see Apostle Paul's. I see Apostle John's. I see Apostle Peter's. I see men and women that God can do a radical thing through. 
I believe today that the Avenue Church is one of those churches that has been chosen on Thursday night the Lord woke me up at 2 o'clock and I want to give you this word this is for the Avenue Church your Heavenly Father has seen your love your passion your ministry to Del Rey and your zeal to serve one another rest in me says the Lord know that there is a greater work that I am doing inside each and every one of you be of good cheer for I have overcome the world can we expect greater things today this week can we go out and bring one other person and believe that the Holy Spirit will fill up this auditorium that there would be such an outpouring in here of just the love of Jesus that the Avenue Church will have to go to another location because every seat in here will be filled will you go will you love will you proclaim can we all rise and stand And I just pray that we would just raise our hands up to heaven. Father God, do your work amongst your people, Lord. Father, this fervent spirit, Lord, that you are birthing inside every one of your men, women, and children in here, Lord. Father, I pray that you would use these men and women as evangelists to a sick and dying world, to a broken world. Lord, I pray that if there's anyone in here who hasn't received you, Lord, that they would come up front here, Lord, and they would just proclaim Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, Lord. I pray that the Holy Spirit would just draw them in, Father. But I pray that this church would be a church of evangelists, a church of teachers, a church of men and women that are sent to change the word and change the world. We pray all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.